So a question that I'm often asked and have often thought about um, as a Davis facilitator myself is Ron's work. When we really look at Ron's work, we if we don't just give it a cursory look, which is what so many people do, they look at Ron's work, they look at his books, The Gift of Dyslexia, The Gift of Learning, and they just give it a quick cursory look because it doesn't, on at first glance, it doesn't actually really match what they think it should be. With some people, when they read uh, Ron's work, it so contradicts what they believe that it actually forces them into cognitive dissonance, uh, which is a real shame. They basically say, no, no, this, this can't be true because it contradicts what they think reading and writing and focusing and learning disabilities are. So when we look at Ron's work, we need to really sort of step back and wait for a moment and say, well, hang on, let's take a really good look. And for me personally, as somebody who is dyslexic, who grew up with these difficulties, for me, uh, Ron's book, The Gift of Dyslexia and The Gift of Learning, is really like looking at the notebooks of Albert Einstein or the notebooks of Newton's calculus and going, wow, that's really what's going on. However, just like Newton and Einstein's work, we have to take a deeper dive. If we just sit on the surface and do a quick cursory look and go, mm, well, I don't know, that's actually the correct answer. We don't know, we're not doing a deep dive. And to really understand Ron's work, you have to deep dive. You have to take a long look at what Ron is saying. Ron has put out these statements, and one of my favorites is, all the symptoms of dyslexia are actually the symptoms of somebody who has become disoriented. And when somebody is disoriented, their brain doesn't get what their eyes see, they get what they think their eyes see. The brain doesn't get what their ears hear, they get what they think their ears hear. Their balance and movement is altered, and their internal sense of time can either speed up or slow down. Now on the surface, that's such a profound statement that it's, uh, it seems very complicated because one, it's so simple. And the way I explain this to little ones that come to see me, because I've had to explain this to them, uh, one young man said to me, but, it, but no, no, I don't get it. If I just do this thing uh, that Ron shows us how to do, which is being oriented, how does that work? What's going on? And the explanation is deep. We have to look deep into Ron's ideas. And when we look at oriented, Ron's ideas and Ron's tools about getting somebody oriented and what an oriented perspective on the world is versus a disoriented perspective on the world, we begin to see that many, if not all, of uh, these learning disabilities are actually the result of somebody who has lived a life or a partial life, if they're 10, right, um, being disoriented. So the information and the beliefs that they have uh, acquired about themselves and about the world are inaccurate because their senses were inaccurate. Um, so when we really take a good, long, hard look at Ron's work, for me personally, it is as profound as Newton, as Einstein, as Galileo, it is as magnificent as Mozart and Beethoven and many, many other famous autistic dyslexics throughout history. And it's interesting to me that it took an autistic dyslexic to really discover and do a very deep dive on what autism and what dyslexia or other learning disabilities actually are. Because Ron himself was on this autistic uh, dyslexic spectrum. I like to think of those two separate spectrums. One is the dyslexic learning disability spectrum and the other is the autistic spectrum. Because Ron was actually profoundly dyslexic and seriously autistic, he was able to do a very deep dive on himself and see well, what's going on in my thinking. What's How does my mind work? When we look at all the other work around these, these two subjects of either learning disability or autism, most of the people are using observational science and they're using who, and these observational scientists are not dyslexic themselves. Or if they are, they haven't discovered what Ron has discovered. Many of them are not autistic and they're not saying, well, this is, they're using observational science to say, well, this is what we think it should be. And Ron is saying, well, this is what it's been for me. And if you're interested in finding out 
I'm truly interested in discovering what is at the root cause of these difficulties, particularly the dyslexia and also the autism, then we have programs that are aimed at both. Now, that is such a profound statement unto itself that it is unnerving for people. And if you're a professional and you spent your life in, uh, in this area of learning disabilities or autism, and somebody comes along and says, oh, by the way, I've discovered what's causing dyslexia or ADD or ADHD or any one of 70 different types of learning disabilities. This is what I discovered about my dyslexia. Um, that's, and you're, and it wasn't you, <laughs> you're not the one that discovered it. That's quite, that can turn somebody's world upside down. Because as I talked about in the video on a paradigm of a learning disability, um, that is quite unnerving for people. Quite recently, I saw a, um, a physicist talk about new discoveries with um, Einstein's work. And this physicist had spent a lifetime studying Einstein's work. And part of Einstein's work has been, um, gonna have not, I probably won't get this correct, but has been sort of reworked. And they found that some of these ideas that he had weren't exactly how he thought they were. So they've gone in one direction with this physics, and don't ask me what it is because I don't know the exact uh, physics that they've been discussing, but they realized that it could be inaccurate and they're having to rework it. And this physicist who spent his lifetime studying Einstein's work said very bravely, I could have spent a lifetime going in completely the wrong direction. And that is both exciting and frightening that I could have been wrong all of my life, but at the same time, it's exciting because we actually get to discover the truth. I don't think we've had that in the realm of learning disabilities and in the, uh, in the realm of autism. Particularly in the realm of learning disabilities, we have a very narrow and a very, I think, stagnant view of what they are in society. Um, I think what the Davis program allows us to do is have a much broader view, a much bigger view of um, learning disabilities, everybody who's on the learning disability spectrum, and everybody who's on the autistic spectrum. Ron's work, The Gift of Dyslexia, The Gift of Learning, and Autism and the Seeds of Change, these books give us a very deep insight into the minds of people who have these difficulties. So I, for one, as a Davis facilitator and a card-carrying dyslexic, um, I'm a fully paid up member of the Dyslexic Club, and also I have problems with dysgraphia, dyscalculia, quite a lot of difficulties on the ADHD spectrum as well. Um, having studied this work and worked with Ron's work for, uh, I think I'm 11 years now, it has profoundly changed my life and it has profoundly changed the life of my clients. So I strongly urge you to uh, share, like, and subscribe to this video because it will help the channel and it will help spread Ron's work and uh, if you would like to find out more about the Davis program you can go to the um, basically the description to low, below sorry will have um, links to my page and also the main Davis web page which is dyslexia.com and also there'll be a link to Davis Autism as well. So uh, that's it for now, that's it for now, bye.